Hi, I'm Chris from Simul, and today I'll be doing an overview of the cloud settings within TrueSky Sequence Actor in Unreal Engine 4. Today we're going to cover what each of the settings do, as well as the settings I normally change within my scenes, and the larger performance hitting settings that you need to be wary of. I have here a scene that has just been initialized, and so it has all default settings. The only difference being is that I've added a simple ground plane, just so that we can get some shadows cast. The cloud settings are located near the top of the sequence actor settings, right underneath time. And the first one we're going to look into is the maximum cloud resolution, which controls the cube map resolution used for the actual cloud rendering. We can go all the way up to 4K resolution, however this setting is extremely performance intensive when you push it that far. And in most of my scenes I find myself working in either 512 or 1024 and you still get a very high quality of cloud but a much lower performance cost than using a higher resolution. You can also lower the resolution but it will create a more pixelated result due to the fact that the cube map resolution is so small. So as you can see 512 crisps up the edge of the generation and 1024 pushes it even more. Wind speed is the next setting that's up. It controls the churn of the clouds within the scene, essentially faking a slight movement without actually moving the cloud position. Using this in combination with cloud movement, using the keyframes, is the best for convincing cloud movement, as well as using the three directional settings in the X, Y, and Z to allow you to alter it to correspond to the direction. So as you can see, just input an X will cause it to look like the clouds are going from left to right in this scene. This strange gridding is actually just the amortization. So if you lower the amortization down to 1, it will get rid of this. We're now going to move on to the rendering section. Here we'll find the max cloud distance. This is another fairly self-explanatory setting. Setting it to a high value will allow the clouds to render further into the distance on your scene. So if I fly up, we'll be able to see it slightly clearer. And it's done in kilometers, so if I have it at 100, you can see the cloud cough is fairly close, whereas upping it to 1,000 pushes it way out into the distance. Surprisingly, this doesn't have a very large hit on performance due to how we use MIP maps but we will get onto that in a later video. Next we have the integration scheme. This can be slightly confusing at first, but covers which type of integration you want to have within your scene. The default and most commonly used one is the grid system, which creates a static grid, which the player will move about freely underneath it and allows for changes in the actual grid size. Next we have the fixed grid, which will create a fixed grid above the player's position. And as the player moves, the grid will move around with you to maintain the player being in the center of the grid. This can produce slightly higher quality clouds, however has the issues that if your character moves too quickly, you'll sometimes see the grid above you attempting to update. And finally, we have a work in progress grid, which is the variable grid, which is a work in progress but still allows for higher resolution clouds at much longer distances, and is essentially the best of both worlds. However, I would advise against using it in its current state as it is still something that is being worked on actively by us. We'll now move on to the render grid settings. As mentioned before, these will only be available if you're using the grid integration scheme and it will change the size of the grid used to generate the clouds. The default is normally high enough for most scenes. However, if you want to push for even higher quality clouds, you can lower this value down to something such as 0.1 and 0.1 in both the X and Z axis which will generate the clouds slightly more dense. You can also use this setting if you're noticing heavy gridding within some of your clouds. And a solution I like to use is to offset one of these. So having say 0 0.1 and 0 0.05, and I find it sometimes helps with this kind of thing. This setting, however, does have a fairly high frame rate hit. And so if you are struggling for frames and you have altered this, either setting it to default or even making it a slightly larger 
won't affect your cloud quality much, but may improve your performance. The default cloud steps determines how many layers or stages are rendered when creating a cloud. Altering this might make your clouds appear more full. So as you can see, the default is 200, upping it to 500 will make it seem thicker almost, and lowering it will make the cloud seem much thinner and may cause some rendering artifacts. Surprisingly, this setting does not come with much of a performance hit, and so generally I like to work with this maxed out, which is at 500. Amortization is a setting which covers the amount of time it takes to update your clouds within the scene. It can cause some artifacting when at a high value, such as 8, and I'll demonstrate that now. So as you move the clouds across the scene, you'll see the gridding as it updates. So generally, I like to keep this setting down low while I'm working, so around 1, so that this update is instantaneous. However, if this is causing performance issues, as it is the update time, so having it at a higher value will mean lower performance so you can set it depending on how your scene works so if you have a fairly slow moving cloud through your scene you will not necessarily need it at one due to the fact that you will not notice the update if it is moving slowly so this is something that you need to sort of play with to find the balance of your setting cloud threshold distance is the next setting that i'm going to cover which is how close a cloud can be rendered to the camera in most cases and most scenes this won't be needed as the player and the camera won't be going through a cloud but it may be needed in some situations such as flight simulators and it's useful to be able to change as it can prevent artifacting with stuff like the cockpit when going through one of the volumetric clouds. Next up is the depth sampling pixel range, the depth temporal alpha and depth blending. These settings all work hand in hand to help determine the depth of an object within a cloud. So if you have a large mesh intersecting with a cloud, the settings will help alleviate any bugs or actually allow the engine to figure out how deep it is and whether to render clouds in front of or behind the object. For an example, I'm going to drag in one of the mannequin meshes and scale it up rather large so that it intersects within the scene, like so and I'll move it so that it is within a cloud. So as you can see, generally, this behaves correctly with the default settings as it knows where to render the clouds. However, we do get some bugs If we set the depth tempo alpha down to its default, you may notice some bugs come through. Generally, this won't be an issue in most scenes again, due to not having a camera flying quickly around a large object in setting clouds. But if this is the case and you do find this almost tearing happening of your clouds, increasing the depth tempo alpha will fix that issue. The next settings I'm going to cover are for the edge noise settings or just the noise settings. These settings are mostly going to affect the actual edge of rendered clouds. So I'll position my camera in a position where we can see this clearly. Now the first setting is edge noise persistence. This is how much the noise itself so the shape of the edge of the cloud persists, essentially, how much we render it. In general, we leave that 
or I personally leave that at default. Similarly, the noise frequency is how often the shape or pattern is repeated. Again, I normally leave it at default, but as you can see, increasing it, you will get the shape to happen over and over. The edge noise texture size controls the resolution of the noise texture that we use to generate this shape. The default first two is okay. Normally I go up to 64 for my scenes, but you can push it even higher. And I think we cap out the 256. So you can see that just makes the noise texture slightly more crisp. It does have a slight performance hit, however, so you've got to be cautious when using it. Hence why I stick around the 64 mark. The wavelength setting uh, changes how far the noise texture is stretched on your clouds. So currently it is at 2.5 kilometers, but increasing this, as you'll see, will make it appear on, over a larger range, and so the effect being less noticeable. And you can push it all the way up to get almost cartoony clouds as the noise texture is affecting such a large range. In general I stick around near the defaults going from about two kilometers up to maybe eight kilometers if I'm doing a large scene. And you just remember that this will affect all the clouds within your scene. The cell noise settings affect the resolution and the wavelength in a similar way to the edge noise settings do. However these will affect the noise texture being used to generate the overall cloud shapes and so essentially they are affecting the Warley noise settings within here and so the cell noise is these circular shapes and so as you would expect upping the resolution makes that texture appear more crisp and the wavelength just sets how large they are spread out but overall these don't make too much of a difference in your scene as you can see I'm editing them but they are setting for if you want slightly higher quality and finally the max fractal amplitude controls how strong the edge noise is applied to each of the clouds so its default is free if I increase it to 10 you'll see that it is affecting it to its maximum amount so we have little splinters off if we lower it down, the edge noise will not affect the cloud shape at all. Moving on from the edge noise to our final section we'll cover in this video, which is the cloud lighting. This is, as you'd expect, just the lighting settings that will only affect the clouds and will not affect the rest of the scene. So we have the directional light control. This is going to control how much the sun, as the sun is controlled by our directional light, will affect our clouds. So lowering it down to zero will mean that the clouds are lit fully by ambient and indirect lighting. And increasing it will highlight or make the edge of the clouds being seen by the sun brighter. Indirect lighting is essentially the bounce lighting within the scene. It's either from the other clouds or from the environment. And dropping this all the way down is one of the ways to simulate an overcast scene as it makes things appear quite dull, like so. And increasing it as well is a way to increase the overall brightness of your clouds as it is going to be multiplying the amount of indirect light reaching them. Extinction is an interesting setting. It is a setting which highlights or emphasizes the shadowed or dark parts in the clouds as it is controlling how much of the light can actually reach the lower sections of the clouds themselves. Generally I like to leave it around default or push it to around 10. As you can see as I increase it the lower parts of the clouds or the more occluded parts appear darker. However, you can increase it greatly for more dramatic effects. 
but I would not advise to lower it as it will completely remove all shading or shadowing on the clouds. And finally we have the me asymmetry which refers to the me scattering that occurs with the sunlight that passes through the clouds. Cloud lighting is mostly affected by me scattering and the asymmetry setting affects how much of the light is diverted from its initial path when passing through a cloud. With a value of 1 or 0 0.999 which is the highest you can go in our plugin, this will be the sunlight being hardly diverted when passing through one of our clouds. The default value of 0 0.8 is a realistic value of natural clouds. So as we can see if the sun shines through it is slightly scattered but you can still see the sun until the thickness becomes too much. And that is the final setting for the cloud section of the sequence actor. As always we're excited to see what you guys produce and hope that this video has at least helped with some of the settings and what they do within your scene. Feel free to use the hashtag TrueSky and hit us up on any of the social medias or on ArtStation and head on over to our Q&A channel if you have any questions or throw a comment down below. Remember to like and subscribe and we look forward to seeing what you'll create.